In early 2021, Professor Dr. Edward Weiss was preparing to thru-hike the Pacific Crest Trail. He wanted to answer a simple question. How would the grueling demands of a five-month hike impact his body? It's a totally unique and extraordinary stimulus on the human body. He ended up tracking all sorts of data three days before starting and 10 days after completing the hike. Analyzing things like cholesterol, bone density, muscle mass, and a lot more. He published his findings in 2023. So you've probably seen these before and after transformation photos of through hikers. The external changes are obvious, often a lot of weight loss and the addition of a wild beard. However, Ted's case study provided a deeper look into what months of extreme hiking and physical exertion can change inside the body. Is the stress of a through hike more than what the body can handle? And it turns out in 2019, another PCT hiker named Thomas Heinbachel did a similar before and after study and tracked similar data. Their results are fascinating and suggest things I had never even thought about. Thruhiking seems to improve your health in ways that few other activities can, but it also could create some pretty concerning health issues. What can I shut off for at least a while and still survive? So what is really happening to our bodies on a through hike and is thruhiking actually healthy or harmful? In order to find out, we dug deeper into a few other case studies and, yep, hopped on the phone with the subjects themselves, Ted and Tom, to learn more. You see, hiking 15 or 20 miles up and down mountains every day with a loaded down pack for months puts serious stress on your body. You're essentially becoming an athlete when you're through hiking. If you saw our recent video about the through hiker diet, you'll know just how crazy the 5,000 calorie daily burn rate is on trail and how problematic it can be to operate in an energy deficient state for an extended period of time, especially after your body has depleted extra fat storage. The extreme physical exertion forces your body into survival mode and to prioritize more vital systems and shut down less vital systems like the reproductive system. Things like menstrual cycles can cease for women and things like sperm count can decrease for men. But another one of these system shutdowns happens to our bones and muscles. Our bodies are smart. The heart has to keep pumping. The lungs have to keep circulating air in and out. And what can I shut off for at least a while and still survive? And one thing would be reproductive function. The other is bone. One of the things Ted tracked was his spine bone mineral density before and after his through hike it dropped a whopping 8.5 percent for context the average human only loses about 0.5 percent of their bone mineral density every year as we age too much loss can lead to osteoporosis it dropped similarly to what it would be expected to drop if i had aged almost 20 years or about 20 years which is very concerning now guess what else can age your bones by 20 years over the course of a few months space flight Space flight is known to be terrible for bones, and I think it's two to four weeks of space flight does similar damage to the bones. Yeah, you heard that right. You can lose almost as much bone density through hiking as an astronaut loses from the loss of gravity. Now, what's even scarier is nine out of 17 astronauts studied were not able to get their bone densities back to baseline after returning to Earth. That means even with high-tech rehabilitation and strict recovery programs, more than half of astronauts never fully recover, suggesting serious long-term bone concerns for through hikers. Other hikers like Tom also reported spine bone mineral density losses of 5% and another case study showed a 3.8% loss in bone density. Yikes. But wait, I thought all of those heavy weight bearing miles you hike would result in stronger bones, right? This goes back to the system shutdown. Without proper energy intake and recovery, the body is forced to break down bone for minerals to sustain other essential functions. Bone remodeling is your body's way of replacing old bone tissue with new stronger bone. But during a through hike, this process shuts down, meaning bone loss can outpace bone formation. And and this loss is not just limited to your bones. Many through hikers lose muscle mass as well. You might have heard jokes about the T-Rex syndrome on trail where hikers become very lean, especially their upper half. Comes rambling Rex, Dave. The potential good news for our bones is that despite the bone density decreases and body composition changes, a through hiker's body might recover better than the astronauts. For example, Ted tracks his bone density data yet again, eight and 12 months after his hike. I was astounded. I didn't think it would all come back that quickly. It was right back to base. Now body weight came up, bone got restored. And muscle mass and body compositions generally came back to baseline as well post hike, suggesting that any of these negative effects could just be temporary. But these bone and muscle losses do seem to matter in the short term while hiking. 
Why? So glad you asked. The combination of lower levels of bone density and muscle mass with high levels of daily strain and overuse creates a really great recipe for stress fractures and injury. This survey conducted between 2018 and 2019 by the Appalachian Trail Conservancy from over 1,200 through hikers asked several questions related to musculoskeletal injuries or MSK injuries. 28% reported chronic injuries that developed over time related to overuse and 18% reported acute injuries related to an incident like a fall or sprained ankle. These stats are further supported by this 2024 survey from the Trek from nearly 400 Appalachian Trail through hikers. 54% reported an injury on their through hike and over 60% of these injuries impacted their ability to hike. These numbers are astounding. Basically, you have a one in two chance of a noteworthy injury, a break, a sprain, tendonitis, knee swelling, which can obviously be painful, but also really suck to have to get off trail. Now, compare these injury stats to marathon runners. Only 30% of marathon runners reported getting injured while training. Still a high rate of injury, but through hiking is significantly worse. There are a, a lot more physical changes we could talk about, like skin, the blisters and calluses, the fungal infections like athlete's foot, and sun damage, especially in exposed deserts or above tree line sections, or things like hormones. Men, you don't see it in through hiker literature, but military basic training is an enormous stress, kind of like through hiking is, and they document massive reductions in sex hormones. Or sleep. Some hikers sleep like babies on the trail and really sync up their circadian rhythms with sunset and sunrise. Many report horrible sleep on the trail though, myself included. Constantly changing hot and cold temperatures, cramped sleeping bags and tents, uneven ground, crappy pillows, allergies. This can make recovery much more difficult. Sleep differences alone could explain why the marathon runner's rate of injury is so much lower than through hikers, simply because after their long training runs, they go home, eat a nutritious meal, and recover with a cozy night's sleep in their beds. Maybe even follow it with a rest day. So through hiking certainly poses health and injury concerns related to bone density and muscle loss, especially for a prolonged period of time. But let's look at the other side of this. Me and my mentor decided to do all this testing on me, measure the health of my arteries, like how stiff they are, how well they react to increases in blood flow, how well they respond. In many ways, through hiking turns you into an endurance athlete. And with that comes some serious health benefits, particularly for your heart, lungs, and Overall longevity. Through hiking is really good for the cardiovascular and respiratory systems. So both of those systems improve. Your heart is a muscle and all of that cardio can make your heart stronger and more efficient. Stroke volume is the amount of blood your heart pumps per beat. A stronger heart can pump more blood per beat, resulting in a lower heart rate, common in marathon runners. Also an improvement in arterial or artery function and red blood cell count. Your arteries become more elastic and responsive to changes in blood flow. You grow more capillaries who are able to and blood flow to all these new places, or at least more blood flow and oxygen and nutrients to all your muscles and important organs. But perhaps the most important benefit is something you might have heard about. Well, a VO2 max. VO2 max. Increase your VO2 max. VO2 max is the maximum amount of oxygen your body can take in, transport, and use for movement. And it is an excellent predictor, maybe one of the best we have, of lifespan and health span. So people with higher VO2 max typically live longer and they also live healthier lives. And guess what helps increase VO2 max? Max. Aerobic exercise. And as Harvard says, the more vigorous the aerobic exercise, the better. While there's no direct study on VO2 max changes in through hikers, there have been a lot of related studies on endurance athletes. Like this meta-analysis of 41 controlled clinical trials that concluded endurance exercise training resulted in a whopping 16.3% increase in VO2 max, and even more for training that extended greater than 20 weeks, suggesting that through hiking could help improve one of the most important health indicators. So is through hiking healthy or harmful for the body? Now, the case studies we referenced certainly help answer this question, but admittedly, they are limited by a small sample size of just a few individuals. And there were a lot of variables at play other than just hiking, like changes in sleep and and huge changes in diet. There are also several data inconsistencies. For example, one study might show a through hiker showed a decrease in cholesterol levels post hike, and another case study might show an increase in cholesterol levels post hike, which makes it hard to draw absolute conclusions on any of this. We would just need 
a lot more data. However, it does seem like the increase in physical activity is very beneficial for certain systems, but too much of anything can be harmful. Your body is operating in a prolonged state of stress, which can shut down key systems, especially if you're not getting enough nutrition or sleep. So prioritize eating well and getting good sleep to help mitigate some of these potential health risks. That means high quantity and high quality food and sleep. And for quality trail food, have you tried our Green Belly Meals? I'm Chris Cage, the founder. They are 650 calories and have been called Rice Krispie Treats on steroids. Check out the video we did recently on the through hiker diet. Eat well, rest well, and hike on. A big thanks to Tom and Ted for their help making this video. Don't put that in there, Juan. <laughs>